What's going on guys, Ian Vinick back with another video and today we're going to be talking about seven quick tips on B2B SaaS search engine marketing campaigns and we're just going to be quickly going through this. This is generally geared towards the CEOs or the CMOs of companies that we're working with and on the services side of our business and we're essentially just um, going to be walking through how we generate more demos, more inbound pipeline and then also close revenue for you every single quarter. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump in. There's quick seven tips on what we do generally with all of our clients. So number one is we need to align on inbound demo and pipeline goals. So this is just kind of like, you know, a, a given. We need to figure out what you guys are really wanting from our services after 60 days. Um, and usually that's like in the form of like a certain number of demos or a certain number of pipeline that you guys have. Um, and we can do that. Um, we can kind of accomplish that by using SEM, which is what this whole blog is about. So um, that's step number one. Step number two is we actually need to extract some knowledge from you guys on your core message, like what you guys have right now, uh, as well as like, you know, get your brand guidelines, pick, um, your ICP, or if you guys already have your ICP picked, great. But we're going to uh, really narrow down who we're targeting with our ads and like how they, you know, type things in in the search engine and like what they're actually looking for. So that's really important. And then identify some existing content that we could maybe use in some nurture campaigns, um, whether that's in your email or that's actually on like LinkedIn with some lead generation ads. Um, but, you know, for us to get all this information up front is going to allow us to start building out your campaign plan. Um, while we're building out your campaign plan, we'll also set up a dashboard that tracks like leading and lagging indicators. This will just be in HubSpot. Generally speaking, we, we use HubSpot for all of our clients and we'll be able to sync um, all of your metrics in there. So you can see how, you know, leads are actually contributing to um, pipeline and potentially uh, contributing to closed revenue for you guys. So we'll be setting up a HubSpot dashboard for you. And we will also do this cool thing where we'll sync up offline conversions. So like if your sales guys throw in someone that, you know, closed a deal um, and maybe they had interacted with an ad or at some point in their, in their life cycle, it'll sync up the offline conversion data with Google ads so that it can essentially scale um, um, budget on on the best converting leads, not the cheapest converting leads. So this is a whole thing in um, the Google Ads, Google Ad world, where essentially um, you'll you'll have a lot of people that want to drive the lowest cost uh, per acquisition for a lead, but that's actually not always the best metric to optimize on because maybe some of those leads don't convert, and so you actually want to optimize for the leads that do convert, and so. If you could spend $500 and get a lead that converts into a thousand plus dollar contract or more, that's better than getting, you know, five $100 um, contracts or five $100 leads that don't convert into anything. And so um, it's not necessarily about lead, um, lead like having the most leads, but it is about having the best converting leads. And so we we're actually able to sync up that data in HubSpot, which is really important for our um, SEM work that we're doing with you. Um, so after that, we're going to kind of use a lot of that information that we gathered in step two to develop your core theme and message that we want to communicate to the market, specifically with your Google ads um, and how we want to kind of align content. Um, and like those visitors that come to your website want to make sure they have a good experience. So we're going to, you know, basically use all of that information that we learned in our offer workshop and in our, um, um, basically just in our workshops when we're onboarding you to kind of get that information clearly articulated to customers. Um, we'll start with Google ads. Like I said here, most of our clients do start with Google ads because they have existing search volume or they have keywords that we can use, um, to target and get them into our funnel. Um, so we'll focus on, you know, high intent keywords and we'll put modifiers on them like software and tool and vendor and stuff like that. Um, and then we'll layer on like a retargeting campaign, which is called, um, an RLSA campaign. And essentially it's, we're going to convert leads that previously hadn't converted before 
So if they'd visited your website or they visited, um, you know, they'd been to your website from another social media channel or read a blog or something, we're going to target them with ads so that later on they can actually convert, um, after, you know, once they're ready to buy. And, um, you know, we also just like to throw this out there that we'll start a brand campaign only after we really see competitors bidding on your brand keywords. Um, otherwise, we're kind of just wasting money and we don't need it. So um, that's super important. And then, um, so number six, which is, you know, Google ads, this kind of talks about monthly ad spend, but um, generally speaking for B2B SaaS clients with larger deal sizes, we start to see opportunities come through at the 10 to $15,000 per month in ad spend range. And that's where we know we can drive consistent opportunities for you. If we have a lower ad budget, we have to be more um, aggressive or cons so I should say uh, conservative with our spending. So we'll have different ROAS settings inside of Google that'll effectively limit the number of times that our ads will show up or be clicked on. But when they are, that'll um, increase the demos and increase the pipeline and the eventual closed revenue. So um, there's, there's some levers that we can pull to increase performance as needed with the amount of ad spend that we have. Um, but it's always best to have like roughly 10 to 15,000 in ad spend if we're doing Google ads and we really want to generate opportunities. Um, but yeah, so that's like part one of this, you know, part six, I guess you could say. But then later on, like once we start to see opportunities, we'll expand into LinkedIn or Facebook and build more awareness and just kind of guarantee that our message is hitting the right target um, ideal customer profile. And we're going to use a combination of like account lists, if you guys have some, so that we can like retarget them on social media. But we'll also use firmographic data, which is essentially like if they work at this company and they have this job title or they've worked there for this many years, that we want to hit them with an ad. And so that's, you know, we're always going to make sure that we're aligned with your sales team to make sure that we're hitting the right people and not wasting your advertising money. And um, the last step here, really, or just kind of tip, is that we're gonna create this LinkedIn and Facebook campaign and it has two layers. So we have a prospecting layer that you know leads people to product marketing ads. They go back to these landing pages that are not squeeze pages. So there's a lot of information on these pages that they can educate them, build awareness uh, about like what your product does and the value that it brings. And then we'll like kind of, you know, distribute blogs and guides that are ungated so we can get a lot of organic engagement from your ICP. Um, and then what we'll do to follow up with those people is we'll have a retargeting layer and we'll use like testimonials, we'll use case studies um, and they'll lead back to, you know, case study pages or just like higher intent pages, middle of funnel to bottom of funnel pages that, um, you know, have basically have a more direct offer and we'll move them forward in the funnel. So, um, that they can actually become a, you know, become a demo, become pipeline for us. Um, and we'll distribute this content on Facebook as well. So if we're primarily hitting LinkedIn, which is a lot of B2B SaaS audiences, um, then we'll also um, be hitting like Facebook as well. And then potentially other um, social media pla uh, platforms as well that your target audience is on. So with that being said, that's that's our multi-touch attribution model setup. And these are kind of seven tips that if you're not doing these things, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're a B2B SaaS owner, you should try to do these things. They work really well for us and we see the best results from them. So hope you have a great day. Hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We have more videos coming just like these and hope to talk to you soon. Have a great day.